Hello and welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 50. In this video we're going to learn about direct variation. So throughout your studies of algebra you're going to encounter many different types of variation. Obviously as you move higher in algebra you get to Algebra 2 and College Algebra you know so on and so forth. The types of variation that you're going to encounter are going to become more and more challenging. But for an Algebra 1 course you're typically just going to deal with direct variation which we'll see in this lesson and then also inverse variation, which we're going to cover in the next lesson. So I want to just start out by saying y varies directly with x if there is a constant k such that y is equal to k times x. Now this is generally the first thing you're going to read in your textbook when you're in a direct variation section. So they have a special name, and you're going to see this, for k. It's called the constant of variation. Now, we have seen this type of equation before. I want you to think back many lessons ago when we learned about linear equations in two variables. Remember we were graphing these things and we went through different forms of the line and if I had a linear equation in two variables in something known as slope intercept form, we wrote this as y is equal to m the slope times x plus b where b was the y-intercept, right? Remember, I could plug in a zero for x, and I would figure out what y would be equal to by just looking at what b was. So if I plugged in a zero for b, let's say I had a zero for b, and I had a y-intercept that occurred at the point zero comma zero, so plug in a zero for x, get a zero for y, I have this exact equation here. It looks different because this is an m and this is a k, but it's the same equation, right? I just swapped out letters and I renamed it, right? In this case, this is known as a slope. And when we get into the section on direct variation, we change it and we say it's the constant of variation. So same equation, same properties. One of the things that you might remember, you know, just to give you a little insight, as x increases, okay, so as x increases, if k is positive, then y is going to increase. So if k, let me write, if k is positive, as x increases, y increases. But we can be more specific than that, because as x, as x increases by one unit, we would see that y increases by k units, right, by this constant of variation that is multiplying x, or again, you can think about it as the slope. So to see an example of this, let's just say we had something like y equals 7x. Well, if I started out by making like a little table, let's say this is my x value, this is my y value. Let's say I just start out by saying, okay, x is 1. So if x is 1, I plug in a 1 there, 1 times 7 is 7, so y is 7. Now, as x increases by one unit, so let me just say x is going to increase by one unit, so this goes to 2 now, what's y going to go to? Without plugging anything in, I should know that y would increase by 7 units, right? So 7 plus 7 is 14, so this should be 14. So this increases by 7 units. And does it? Plug in a 2 for x, 2 times 7 is 14, so that is what you get. Again, this is the case as you move up. So if I go up by another 1, and this is x equals 3 now, I would go up by another 7. So this would be y equals 21, right? So if I did 4, this would be 28. If I did 5, this would be 35, so on and so forth. And this works in the opposite direction as well. As I decrease x by 1, I'm decreasing y by 7. And to see that, let's do another example. Let's say I had something like y equals 3x now. So the constant of variation, the k, is 3, right? Or I could say m is 3. I could think of it as slope if that makes you feel more comfortable for right now. As I increase x by 1 unit, y will increase by 3 units. As I decrease x by 1 unit, y will decrease by 3 units. So in other words, if I started out with, let's say, x equal to 10. So plug in a 10 for x, 10 times 3 is 30. Y would be 30. 
If I decreased x by one unit, so let's say I went down to nine, I'm gonna put minus one there. Y is gonna decrease by three units. So 30 minus three is 27. And of course, if I plugged in a nine there, nine times three is 27, right? So this decreases by three. And you can keep going. If I put an eight here, this would be 24. Seven here, this would be 21. Six here, this would be 18. So every time I decrease x by one, I am decreasing y by three, that constant of variation, or again, that slope. So that's simple enough to understand. I want you to think about a real world scenario now. Let's suppose you purchased gas for $5.25 per gallon. We could model this purchase as y, which is the total, the total cost, or kind of your ending transaction is equal to 5.25, this is gonna be your K, your constant of variation, or your slope, however you wanna think about that. And then X is gonna be the number of gallons purchased. So we've all done stuff like this. Let's say you go up to the gas pump and you have, let's say, $20 in your wallet, and it's $2 a gallon. Make it really, really simple. You know that you can buy 10 gallons of gas. Can't go over that because you only have 20 bucks. So it's the same thing here. If we've modeled this purchase, it's $5.25 per gallon of gasoline purchased. Well, of course, if I plug in a one there, I'm going to pay $5.25 for that transaction. If I plug in a two, I just increase what I just had by 5.25. So now I'm paying 10.50. If I increase it to three, I go up by another 5.25. So now I'm paying 15.75 or $15.75, right? So on and so forth. All right, so now that we have a little bit of understanding under our belts, let's look at a typical problem that you're gonna see kind of when you get to the questions in the back of your book or for your homework or for a test. And these, these type of scenarios are very, very easy to deal with. So we have that y varies directly with x and y equals 40 when x equals five. So that's the first part. They kind of give you an opening case to deal with. And then they're gonna give you a problem to solve. It says find y when x equals three. So I'm not gonna deal with this until last. The first thing I'm gonna always do is I'm gonna find k, the constant of variation. In order to do that, I need to do a little basic algebra. So we say that, again, y varies directly with x, and y equals 40, so I'm gonna write this equation, y equals kx, that's my direct variation equation, and then y they're saying is 40, so I'm gonna plug in a 40 there, and that says when x equals five. So I don't know what k is, but I know x is five. And to switch that around so it looks more traditional, let's put 5k. Now, how would I go about finding the value for k here? Well, this is a linear equation in one variable, and so all I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by five, the coefficient for k, and so this is gonna cancel with this. 40 divided by five is eight, so I get eight is equal to k. So once I have found my constant of variation, all I need to do is deal with this scenario that they're asking me to provide an answer for. So it says find y when x equals three. Well, I know that k is eight and I know x is three. So that's pretty simple. I'm just following this equation. I'm just plugging things in, right? That's all I'm doing. So I plugged in an eight for k and I plugged in a three for x. Once I multiply these two together, I'm gonna find that y is equal to 24. So find y when x equals three, again, y is gonna be equal to 24. And these problems are just that simple. All right, so here's the next one. If q varies directly with m and q equals five when m equals 20, find q when m equals 24. So you might see this and go, whoa, what's with all these letters? I'm very confused right now. But just follow the traditional format of x and y. So just start out with what you know. y is equal to k times x. Okay, so now it's Q that's varying directly with M. So this would be, in this scenario, Q would take the place of Y, and M would take the place of X. And I know that could get extra confusing because 
We use m to denote slope, and you have this k here, which is, you know, the same thing as slope. So just focus on what you're given and take it piece by piece. I'm going to use m to represent x here and put my k there. And then I'm given information. q equals 5, so this is going to be a 5, when m equals 20. So m is going to be a 20. Very, very easy to solve. So let me drag this up here. And what would we have? 5 is equal to 20 times k. Divide both sides of the equation by 20 so I can isolate k. And we're going to do some canceling. This would cancel with this. And you get k equals 5 over 20. 5 over 20 simplifies to 1 fourth. So 1 fourth is equal to k. So now that I've found this information, my constant of variation, I have this scenario that they want me to deal with, which is to find q when m equals 24. So using this equation that I've already figured out, I'm just going to plug in. I'm going to find q. So what is q when m is 24? So I know k is 1 fourth, and I know that m is 24. Multiply the two together, 1 fourth times 24 is 6, right? Because this would cancel with this and give me 6. 6 times 1 is 6, so q equals 6. And again, what I try to do in these scenarios where they change the letters around, and typically you don't see this until you get to algebra 2, but I try to just replace it with what I know. So I would say, okay, if y varies directly with x and y equals 5 when x equals 20, find y when x equals 24. So I would plug in all the information to my original formula, solve it, and then just go back and say, okay, well, y was representing q, so y equals 6 is the answer I got, so q equals 6, right, so on and so forth. That's how you deal with these letter changes when you first get them, because this is something you might see on the SAT or the ACT, and it's just them throwing a wrench at you, because they know that you've prepared for this, but they want to see if you can adapt, if you can go further than basically just regurgitating what you've learned in a textbook and kind of apply your knowledge when you get a minor scenario change. So now that we've dealt with two basic scenarios with direct variation, you're going to encounter something known as direct variation as a power. So it's not more difficult. You follow the same process to get your solution. But you're just going to have a power on your variable x now. Okay, so y is equal to k, again, the constant of variation, times x raised to the nth power. So I have here y varies directly with the nth power of x if there exists a real number k such that, again, y equals k, that constant of variation, times x raised to the nth power. So let's take a look at an example here. We have if y varies directly with x squared and y equals 50 when x equals 2, find y when x equals 10. So the equation with direct variation as a power, we just write that. y is equal to k times x to the nth power. And we're just going to plug in. It's just that simple. So if y varies directly with x squared, so instead of an n, I'm going to put a 2 there. And then y equals 50, so I'm going to replace this with a 50, when x equals 2, find y when x equals 10. So let's find k first, and then we'll deal with this scenario second. Okay, so 2 squared is obviously 4, so you would get 50 is equal to 4k. Divide both sides of the equation by 4. And 50 is not divisible by 4, but it is divisible by 2. 50 divided by 2 is 25. So what you'd end up with is 25 halves is equal to k. Let's drag this up here, and we're going to apply that. So we want to find y now when x equals 10. So we don't know what y is. We know that k is 25 halves. And we know that x is 10. And we know that it's squared. So 10 squared is 100. So let's go ahead and write that out. So we'd have times 100 here. And essentially, this is going to cancel with this and give me a 50. And we'd have 50 times 25. Now, to do this easily, 5 times 25 is 125. Put a 0 at the end. You get y is equal to 1,250. All right, let's take a look at one more. 
So if a varies directly with b to the fourth power, and a equals 162 when b equals 3, find a when b equals 1. So again, when they kind of throw these different letters at you, just start out with what you know. Don't panic. Just say, okay, well, I know from my formulas that I memorized that y is equal to k times x to the nth power. Okay, so now I have a that varies directly with b to the fourth power. So a takes the place of y. I still have my k. And then b to the fourth power is going to take the place of x to the nth power. So it's just that simple. Just write what you know and then just substitute based on the problem. Once you have a general understanding of this, it's going to be very, very easy to do. All right, so the next part is that A equals 162, 162, when B equals 3. So B is going to be 3. Then find A when B equals 1. So we'll deal with this last. The first thing we want to do is just find K. So let's figure out what that's going to be. Let's drag this up here. So I'd have 162 is equal to 3 to the 4th power, which is what? 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. So this would be 81K. And if I divide both sides of the equation by 81, this is going to cancel with this, and 162 over 81 is 2. So this is K is equal to 2. Now that I have that information, they want me to find A when B equals 1. So I want A is equal to, I know that K is 2, so I'm going to plug in a 2 for that, and I know that B here is 1. So I'd have 1 to the 4th power, which I'm basically just multiplying by 1. So again, as I just said, 1 to the 4th power is 1, and then 1 times 2 is 2, so A here is going to equal 2. That's going to be your answer.